I'm going to download and install the new Exchange Server SE Edition or Subscription Edition, which replaces Exchange Server 2019. So here I just did a quick Google search, typed in Exchange Server SE, and I got this download, which is a free download from Microsoft. You don't need an account or anything like that. Once this ISO is done downloading, I'm going to create a new virtual machine, mount this ISO, and then run the installation. I'm on a Windows 2025 server and I've mounted the Exchange SE DVD. So now I'm going to run through the installation. And I'll scroll down to where it says Exchange Server.msi to run the install. And that should bring up the install screen. There's a long pause after the installation starts and the box disappears. And then after a few minutes, you're going to see this initializing setup box appear. The resources I have on this Hyper-V virtual machine running Windows Server 2025 are eight virtual CPU cores, as well as 48 gigabytes of RAM. And now I'm ready to start the installation and configuration portion. So I'll go ahead and accept the license agreement. I'm going to choose to use recommended settings, but you can also choose manual and figure out exactly what you want. I'm going to choose the mailbox role, which automatically adds in the management tools and the edge transport portion and choose to automatically install Windows Server roles and features that are required. Now it's specifying the path for the installation. I'll just choose the default and click next. I'm going to leave the default name for the organization. And you can also set up split permissions so you can have different people manage Active Directory than managing Exchange. But for this particular demo, I'll just leave that unchecked. Now it's asking if I'd like to disable malware scanning. I'm not using another anti-malware program, so I'll just choose no. Now it's configuring the prerequisites. Now in some cases you might find out you don't have everything installed that you need to have installed, but it'll tell you what those things are. It finally got to the readiness checks and you can see I did get several errors. So what I did was I clicked on each one of these links which allowed me to download the files that I needed in order to continue with the installation. Also, if you're installing this on a domain controller as I am, just as a demonstration, it's not a good idea to do it that way, then you're going to give this warning saying that it might cause some issues with hackers. So I'll just go ahead and click retry and I'll be able to install. Now you can see there's going to be 14 steps to the installation. So this can take quite a while to complete. It should install automatically, so you should not have to make any changes or click anything during the installation. It's just going to go through each of these different steps. If any of the steps fail, then it'll tell you why, what you need to do to fix it, just as it did for the prerequisite phase. My installation is almost complete. I'm on step 12 of 14. And in the meantime, you should probably know the cost. The cost of installing and running the Exchange Server Subscription Edition is going to be between $700 and $800 per year, which is our estimate, and $50 to $110 per year per user, depending on how many features you have activated. So there are different features, just as there were for the enterprise version of Exchange. And you can choose to activate those features on an individual basis instead of having all those features turned on in the enterprise version like you would with Exchange 2019 and previous. So in some cases it could save you money, but in most cases it will cost more because Exchange 2019 was around $1,000, but you then didn't have to pay any monthly fees or annual fees for it, unlike the subscription edition which may be between seven and 800, but you'll have to pay it for every year. However, one nice thing is you won't have to replace that version of Exchange. It will just continually update for you. So the upgrades that you had done in previous versions are all done with. This is going to be just an introductory video on installing and accessing the graphical user interface once it's all done. I'll be doing an official course later on, which will be much more comprehensive. Setup has completed. I'm going to launch the Exchange Administration Center and click Finish. I'm not yet using a public certificate, so I am going to get a message saying that the connection isn't secure, but you can just go ahead and ignore that and continue. 
And here's my login. I'm going to put in my domain backslash username. There are several new features with the Exchange Server SE, which is different from 2019, such as you're no longer going to have support for the old fashioned connection to Outlook. It's going to use the newer, more secure way of using it. So Outlook Anywhere is now gone, as well as Remote PowerShell. These have all been replaced with newer types of connections that are more secure. It's also going to support Kerberos, which is going to be more secure than the previous type of authentication, and a tighter communication with the hybrid setup with Exchange Online for those organizations that want to have Exchange on-premises as well as online in a hybrid configuration. So here we are in the Exchange Admin Center. It looks very much like the Exchange 2019 as well as 2016, so it doesn't really work that much differently. By default, you can see it created an administrator account, which is needed, of course, to be able to manage the Exchange Admin Center. But you can create new mailboxes simply by clicking on the plus and choosing new user mailbox. Now I can choose an existing user from my Active Directory, or I can create a brand new user, which will automatically create an Active Directory user that goes along with it. I just have the one test user, so I'll go ahead and use that and leave the aliases test and you can go and configure further information below and save when done. Now you can see two mailboxes. If I go to Mailflow, this is going to be one of the more important areas. You're going to see send and receive connectors. So these connectors allow us to send email out as well as receive email. You'll also, of course, have to create special DNS records in your public domain depending on where it is that you have your public DNS set. You simply need to just create one send connector to go out to the internet, but the receive connectors are already there. You can go ahead and start configuring those or just go ahead and leave them as default and internal email will work already. You can see there's still options for public folders. We weren't sure if that was going to happen with this new version, but that is still there. And you also have options for mobile device access as well. Under protection, here you can see there's a built-in malware filter and it's already default enabled, but you can go in and customize it to work for you if you'd like. There's also a hybrid section for once again, if you are connected to Exchange Online and would like to have email in both locations. There are lots of features to go over when I create my more comprehensive course, but this is a first look at Exchange Server SE, which stands for Subscription Edition.